A respirator can protect the wearer from airborne contaminants such as tuberculosis or COVID-19. But in order to provide that protection, it's important to ensure a proper fit of the mask, which means it creates a good seal against the skin that won't allow unfiltered air to leak into the mask. In order to assess the fit of a respirator, a qualitative fit test can be performed. This video will explain and demonstrate the process of performing a qualitative fit test to ensure the proper fit of a respirator. Before performing a fit test, gather the necessary supplies. You may have a 3M fit testing kit that contains everything in one box, or you may have to gather your equipment separately. You will need two nebulizers, a fit test hood and the collar that the hood will attach to, a copy of the rainbow passage, and a timer. A 30 second egg timer will be utilized in this video, but anything able to show the passing of 30 seconds will work. You'll also need fit test solutions. Qualitative fit tests are completed with either sweet or bitter solutions. For each type, there are two different bottles, each with a different concentration of the solution. Sweet is the initial solution that will be attempted for most, if not all, people. It is a sugar solution that will be aerosolized around the colleague's face. If they are not able to taste the sweet solution, which will occasionally happen, then a bitter solution can be used. The bitter solution can be tasted by almost everybody, but it's not a pleasant taste, so it's not the preferred solution for fit testing. For both sweet and bitter fit test solutions, there will be a bottle with a red label and a bottle with a black label. The red label is the sensitivity solution. It is a low concentration version of either the sweet or bitter solution. It is the solution that will be used to test to ensure the colleague can taste the solution we'll be using. The black label bottle is the fit test solution. This is a much higher concentration of either the sweet or bitter, and this will be used during the actual fit test. Your colleague will need a respirator. This video will demonstrate the fit test process using a 3M half face piece respirator, but the same process can be used to test any airborne respirator, such as an N95 mask. Finally, you will need a qualitative fit testing form to track the completion of this test and to serve as a guide to performing the fit test. Before you begin, you have to assemble some of your equipment. Take the hood and the collar. The collar has a groove around the top. Now open the hood. Notice the ties in the front of the hood. They are part of a strap that wraps around the entire base of the hood. Stretch the opening on the bottom of the hood over the groove on the top of the collar, so the strap sits inside of the groove. Align the ties with the large hole in the front of the collar, and then tie the strap tight to secure the hood to the collar. Next, take out your nebulizers. They function identically, so functionally, it doesn't matter which solution you put in either nebulizer. But the tops of the nebulizer should have colored writing one with red and the other with black, indicating either red sensitivity solution or black fit testing solution. This is to help you keep track of which solution you put in which nebulizer. Take the red sensitivity solution and fill the base of one of the nebulizers. You won't need much solution. A little goes a long way. There are some markings on the base to tell you the volume present. It holds a maximum of 4 milliliters, but you won't need that much unless you are fit testing a large number of people. Screw on the top of the nebulizer that has the red writing on it. Open both ports by pulling the white plugs out of the nebulizer. Then hold the nebulizer in front of a light source and squeeze it. You should see a cloud of solution exiting the tube. If you don't, the nebulizer isn't working properly. See the nebulizer video for assistance. Next, fill the second nebulizer with the black fit test solution. You will use more of this solution than the sensitivity solution, but a little still goes a long way. Attach the nebulizer top with the black labeling to this nebulizer. Then, test that the nebulizer is working before proceeding. Your supplies are gathered and ready to be used. Bring in your colleague and have them fill out the necessary items on the qualitative fit testing form. One side will require their name, job, department, employee ID number, and to answer two questions before signing at the bottom. The other will only need them to fill out the top portion at this time, which only requires their name, job title, employee number, and department. You can use the form to help walk you through the steps to a fit test. Start at Part 1. Test that the participant is sensitive to the solution, which means that they can taste the solution you will be using. We start with sweet. Since you're testing that the colleague is sensitive to the solution, you'll need the nebulizer that holds the red sensitivity solution. Have the colleague place the hood over their head. They should have no mask on at this time. And at this point, you just need to make sure that they are able to taste this solution. So with their mouth open and tongue slightly out, have them breathe through their mouth. Tell them, I'm going to spray a sugar solution into this hood. I need you to tell me when you can taste it. 
Then spray up to 10 sprays of solution into the hood, through the small hole that is located in front of the person's face. Angle the nebulizer to either side to avoid spraying the mist directly into their eyes and face. If they taste the solution in the first 10 squeezes, circle that on the form and move on to step 2. But if they did not taste it in 10 squeezes, squeeze 10 more. Circle that line if they tasted it, and if not, squeeze a final 10 sprays. If they didn't taste the solution after the full 30 sprays, the sweet solution won't work for this person, and you will need to change to the bitter solution. The process for using bitters is identical to using sweet. Indicate in the part 1 section which solution they were able to taste, and how many squeezes it took for them to taste that solution. If they were able to taste the sweet sensitivity solution, you will use the sweet fit test solution. If they had to use the bitters to be able to taste the solution, you will use the bitter fit test solution to perform the test. Remove the hood and either allow time for the taste to dissipate, or you can give the colleagues some water to wash the taste out. Once they can't taste the solution anymore, have them down the respirator and perform a positive and negative pressure check. If they are successful with both, indicate complete on the form. You have now progressed to part two. Continue the fit test. Have the colleague down the hood. Indicate which solution you will be using for this test. It will always be the same type of solution that was successful during part one. Use the black fit test solution nebulizer to complete the test. You will create a cloud of solution in the hood and need to maintain that cloud throughout the test. To do this, reference the table in part two of the form. If the colleague could taste the sensitivity solution in the first 10 squeezes, you will prime the hood with 10 squeezes of fit test solution, and then every 30 seconds you will squeeze an additional 5 squeezes into the hood to maintain the concentration of solution within the hood. If they needed 20 squeezes, prime with 20, and every 30 seconds you would add an additional 10. For 30, it's 30 to prime, and 15 every 30 seconds. Tell the colleague, now that we know you can taste this, I'm going to spray a much stronger version into this hood. If you can taste it at any point, let me know. It means air is leaking into the respirator. Every minute I'm going to have you change the way you breathe or move your head to see if anything breaks the seal in the mask. Every 30 seconds I'm going to spray more solution into the hood to keep that cloud of solution around your head. For the first minute, just breathe normally. Then squirt the initial priming squeezes into the hood. For this colleague, it was 10. Start your 30 second timer. The fit test has started. It is a seven step test that will take a minimum of seven minutes and the seven steps are listed on the form in part two, just below the table. Step one is to breathe normally for 60 seconds. That step has already been started, and when your 30 second timer is finished, you'll squirt the indicated number of additional squeezes into the hood. For this colleague, that was five squeezes every 30 seconds. Once you've squirted those, restart your timer. When the timer runs out again, provide the additional squeezes again. Flip your timer and tell the colleague, now take deep breaths through your mouth for the next minute. After 30 seconds, squeeze more additional puffs into the hood. After a minute, squeeze again and move to step three. Tell the colleague, for this minute, move your head side to side like you're shaking your head no, and keep doing that for a minute. After 30 seconds, squeeze again and flip your timer. After the full minute, squeeze again and explain. Now nod your head up and down like you're saying yes, and keep doing that for the full minute. Squeeze again after 30 seconds and flip your timer. After the full minute, squeeze again and hand them a copy of the rainbow passage. Tell them, next I need you to read this page out loud. When the sunlight strikes raindrops in the air, they act like a prism and form a rainbow. The rainbow is a division of light into many... At 30 seconds, squeeze again and allow them to continue if they aren't finished. When they finish, squeeze again, restart your timer, and begin step 6. Now I need you to bend over at the waist and stand back up straight and continue to do that for a full minute. At 30 seconds, squeeze again and flip your timer. After the full minute, squeeze again, flip the timer, and tell them, for the last minute, you just need to breathe normally again. After 30 seconds, squeeze again and flip the timer, and after a full minute, if the colleague has not tasted the solution at all during the fit test, they have passed with that mask. On the bottom half of the form, indicate passed, and then write what type of respirator and size they fit with. The first box is for the N95 masks of various makes and models. The second box is designated for the 3M 6000 series half face piece respirator that was used in this video. Write 6000S in model and indicate the size used. The next section requires a signature of the colleague and the fit tester, but part of the signature is indicating that they received all required information on their respirator, including donning and removal, limitations of use, cleaning, and storage. 
All of that information can be viewed through another video called 3M Respirator Inspection and Guidelines. Generally, we have the colleagues view this video prior to performing the fit test. If they have viewed the video and have no questions, and they have completed a fit test, they should sign at the bottom of the form. You will also sign and date in the completed by row. That is the process for a qualitative fit test. And if the colleague does not taste the solution during the fit test, it's a relatively straightforward process. If they do taste something at any point during the test, stop the test and try to figure out the extent and source of the leak. Begin by inspecting the seal and look for any obvious gaps where the mask isn't making contact with the skin. Have the colleague adjust the placement on the face or the tightness with the straps to try to attain a better seal. If that is not successful, they may need a different sized mask. Most people fit a medium sized mask, but some people require smaller or larger masks, and if that seems to be the issue, have the colleague wear a different size and restart the fit test portion, the part two section on the form, from the beginning and test the colleague completely with the new sized mask. Some people may not be able to fit any sized mask, and those colleagues will need to use a PAPR when airborne isolation precautions are necessary. Videos explaining proper use of the PAPR are also available. If you experience issues with nebulizers at any point, please view the Fit Testing Nebulizer Troubleshooting and Maintenance video. After each fit test, disinfect the inside of the hood with gray tap wipes. Allow the hood to dry fully before performing your next fit test. After completing all fit tests for the day, you will need to clean the nebulizers. Empty any remaining solution into the sink. Fill a basin with warm water and soak all parts of the nebulizers to dissolve and clear away any sugar that has crystallized over the course of use. Allow the parts to soak to clean and then allow them to dry before reassembling the nebulizer and storing it with your fit testing supplies. Fit testing is imperative to ensure the safety of anyone wearing a respirator to protect from airborne contaminants. By following the steps in this video, you will be able to effectively fit test an employee.